Father, we thank you for a time like this before you. And we thank you for this wonderful morning. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. At this first Sunday on the 11th month, let the miracle of new beginnings, the miracle of extraordinary progress, the miracle of divine elevation, the miracle of unexplainable breakthrough manifest in every life here in the name of Jesus. I pray for you as we have been praying for weeks here. Any power smiling at you, smiling at me during the day, but fighting you during the night, they must be exposed. They must be disgraced. They must scatter. They must be exposed. They must be disgraced. They must scatter. They must be exposed. They must be disgraced. They must scatter. They must be exposed. They must be disgraced. They must scatter. They must be exposed. They must be disgraced. They must scatter. In the name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Every tragedy left in this year. Every sorrow left in this year is minus you and your family. For there shall be no loss in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's have a God bless you. As we begin to look very closely and very slowly, at this essential topic title the courts of heaven the courts of heaven you'll be you do well to listen carefully the courts of heaven and this is a very very serious situation and something you need to deeply understand when we talk about prayer prayer there are eight dimensions of prayer eight dimensions of prayer eight dimensions of prayer approaches eight dimensions of prayer approaches the first one you approach the father as a friend in John chapter 15 verse 14 John 15 14 you approach God as a friend and when you approach a friend it's different from just approaching anybody it's different from approaching one top man somewhere the way you talk to your friend so when you approach God as a friend both of you can sit down and talk and have a conversation a discussion that's the first approach to prayer John chapter 15 verse 14 ye are my friends if ye do whatever I command you when you obey God's command 
hundred percent. Hundred. You become his friend. That's why God is, was calling people like Abraham, my friend. He spoke to God as friend because he obeyed hundred percent. Ninety-five percent obedience to God is equal to disobedience. Hundred percent obedience guarantees your friendship with God. Oh, so God is not talking to you like a friend. Oh, you can't talk to him like a friend. Then, check your gauge, gauge of obedience. Obedience. God hates disobedience. Hatred. In fact, God takes you who disobey God as a witch. You are a witch. So that's why the first witch in the Bible is Adam. It's not those ones who are flying about. Adam was the first witch. Because he says, disobedience is as iniquity as witchcraft. Disobedience, rebellion to God is as iniquity as witchcraft. This is the same thing as witches. <laughs> what a tragedy for somebody to appear in heaven. They say, you can't enter this place. I say, ah, why can't I enter? I say, because you're a witch. I say, I don't drink blood. I say, you're a witch. So, you become his friend when you practice 100% Obedience. You must make that hundred percent. Ninety-nine and a half percent will not do. This is why people don't become the friend of God. Abraham was ready to sacrifice Isaac because he got an instruction from God. The son that he prayed for so many years to get. <laughs> he was that obedient. And so when God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he went to Abraham. So, I want to destroy that place. But, but you are my friend. I don't think I should do that kind of thing without telling you. And Abraham remember quickly that is a uh, his brother was there with wife and children and he began to negotiate. Oh, it's only a friend you can talk to like that. So I said, say, God, what? but you can't destroy the righteous with the evil one now. Say, far, far, far be it from you. You are not like that. See, perhaps you find 50 people in Sodom and Gomorrah. So, for the sake of 50, I will leave them alone. It's okay. Say, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. How about 45? So, for the sake of 45, I will, I will let the place go. I won't destroy it. Say, I'm sorry that I'm talking like this. How about 40? So for 40, I will leave them alone. But Abraham knew that he was going to 10. He had calculated in his head. Lot is there. His wife is there. He has daughters. Three daughters. Together with their husbands. By the time you add all those things together, time should be okay. But Abraham did not know that uh, there are people that the, the people will not listen. But God still listened to him. 
So once the calculation of time failed, God drained fire and bring someone Sodom and Gomorrah. And, it's, and when the angel was rescued, he said, don't look back behind you. If you look back behind you, you'll be destroyed. The Bible said, Lord's wife, look back. And became a pillar of salt. God said, don't look back. But Abraham, God's friend, he stood and was watching the thing like this. What God said, they should not look. So Will you be a friend of Jesus? Our various languages, we know, they know the value of being God's friend. And therefore it found its way into so many songs we sing. It found its way into so many songs we sing. It's an English song that says, There is not a friend like that lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could hear all our diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus, no. All of our struggles, he will guide till that day is done. There is no other friend like that Lord, Jesus. No, 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 no. See, people who talk in Ibo. They will say, I don't know what's so bad. I didn't hear you. 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 I didn't hear there is no friend like Jesus. He is with me. Jesus alone is a true friend. I will save you. I will save you. I will you. Amen. Amen. When you approach God number two, you approach him as a father. You all know the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You approach him as a father. And no father wants his children to suffer. He says, how can you ask your father for food and he gives you snakes or bad things? So, second prayer approaches as a father. The third prayer approach. You approach God as a creator. In John chapter 1. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. 
and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him. And the Bible says in the beginning God created. You approach him as a creator. In prayer. For you approach him as a warrior deliverer. That's the fourth approach. Warrior deliverer. Like David approached him in Psalm 35. It's a warrior deliverer. Psalm 35. Plead my cause, O Lord with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that divides my heart. Let them be as chaff before the wind. Let the angel of the Lord chase them. I'm praying for somebody here. Beginning from this morning, the warrior angels of God will begin to chase your enemies relentlessly in the name of Jesus. So you approach him like that. He has said, The Lord is a man of war, the Lord is his name. And he's called the Lord of hosts. Those are his warfare way of approaching. Five. You can approach him as a shepherd. As written in Psalm 23. Which I'm sure we all know. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Approach him in prayer as a shepherd. Six. You approach him as a healer. In Exodus 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, 26. And he said, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his status, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. We approach him as a healer. Seven. We approach him as a savior. Savior. In Isaiah. Chapter 12. Verse 2. Behold. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. You approach him as a savior. Crying upon him to save you. As a savior. Finally, you approach him as a judge. This is where we are going. 
you approach him as a judge in Luke chapter 18 I read from verse 1 Luke 18 verse 1 one you approach him as a friend two as a father three as a creator four as a warrior deliverer five as a shepherd six as healer seven as savior and eight as judge in case you didn't get that very well in Luke chapter 18 then he spoke a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint saying there was in the city a judge which fell not God neither regarded man and there was a widow in that city and she came unto him saying avenge me of my adversary and he will not for a while but afterward he said within himself though I fear not God nor regard man yeah because his widow troubled me I will avenge her lest by continual coming she worry me and the Lord said hear what this unjust judge said and said and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he be along with them I tell you that we will avenge them speedily so the eight approaches God as a judge. Therefore, beloved, there is something known, known as the court of the Almighty. God is a judge in a courtroom. Let's go back to the book of First Kings. Chapter 22. First Kings 22 gives you a small idea of what happens at the throne of God. A small idea. Ahab had offended God. And his case was tabled at the court of heaven. His case came to that place. And a decision was taken. He was found guilty. And a decision was taken. First Kings 22. Look at verse 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramad Gilead? So the decision against Ahab was taken in heaven that he must fall at Ramoth Gilead. He had already been found guilty and his, the, the thing is that he must die in that place. That's the judgment. Now they now started planning how to get that to happen. Verse 21. Verse 20. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramad Gilead. And one said on this manner, another said on that manner. That is, all those priests were saying, My Lord, let's do it like this. Let's do it like that. 
And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. One of those around that throne. And the Lord said unto him, Where will? How are you going to do it? And he said, I will go forth. I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And God said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So the spirit went, put lies in the mouth of the prophets who were saying go 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 whereas it's a lying spirit this is why many of us have to be careful those of you who jump about prayer houses like mosquitoes Baba pray for me Mama pray for me this pray for me that pray for me so your head your symbol of destiny that they had no access to they will lay hands on it for you the problem starts and the problem has started now and it's aggravated run to press it for deliverance thinking that God is a joker it means that there could be lying spirits in the mouth of the prophets you are going to consult and they will specifically give you wrong information to, to make the person fail so those of you are running from mountain to mountain <laughs> you better sit down and develop your spiritual life develop your spiritual life read your bible pray for yourself attend bible studies attend Sunday schools MFM has the largest number of schools of all churches in the whole world and it's not only for pastors any, any believer who want to improve your spiritual life you can say I want to climb higher you register for the school of prayer you register for the school of deliverance you register for the school of Bible Christ studies you don't have to be a pastor to go and register for those schools you want to upgrade your spiritual life that's why you see them announcing those schools openly so you won't say you didn't know so don't say it's for pastors no it's for everybody so upgrade your spiritual life so if you don't use that facility you are coming to Martin of Fire you have facilities you are not using and you are carrying your golden anointed head all over the place from this mountain to that mountain to that mountain by the time they capture all the virtues in your head you run back to press it to cry and the Lord will say who asked you to go there some of some of those prophets have even become so daring now they even come to church or go to press after service be calling people come I see this I see that I see this and because you are a baby Christian you refuse to grow you are scared you say I want to say prophet I don't know who you are but this is your prophecy back to the sender not my lord you, you couldn't say that you are scared 
And a lot of people are just wasting their monies on these prophets. <laughs> you are buying candy. May God not allow them to candy your life. You are buying good. Good. Where is that in the Bible? What kind of thing is this? You are you an able-bodied woman. You are following a prophet to a river for bathing. And the prophet is putting sponge in soap and is washing the whole of your body everywhere. There is only one something wrong with you. That thing I used to tell them in youth church. Your head. It's not correct. And this is a serious situation. So there you see. 400 prophets. 400. They go to battle. <laughs> but it's all lies. Only one prophet was telling the truth. And they locked him up. And as they were locking him up, he said, King, if you come back from this battle, then God has not spoken by them. The king said, Take him away. Feed him with bread and water of affliction till I come back. The king never came back. And the person who killed him did not fire arrow at him. He just fired it into the air like that, maybe to waste the arrow to give the impression that he came to fight. And the arrow went straight inside the chariot of the man, entered his heart. As said by the true prophet of God. I'm praying for somebody here. That may you not miss your road. May you not be confused. You will not have any problem that will drive you to false prophets. In the name of Jesus, let that amen rule like thunder. So you can see from this passage that God has a courtroom. But that's not the only scripture. Let's look at a bit more scripture to confirm that God has the court. In Psalm 9, verse 4. Psalm 9, verse 4. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sittest in throne, judging right. He seated on the throne, judging right. Then verse 7. But the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. There it is, you see it. In Isaiah chapter 41, verse 21. Isaiah 41, 21. Isaiah 41, 21. Say, produce your cause. Said the Lord. That is, bring your case. Produce your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. Save the king of Jacob. So that, that is, you can approach that court. You bring forth your cause. He said, Lord, I am here. I didn't do anything to this person. I didn't offend this person. But look at what the person is doing. Therefore, you must bring judgment against this person. 
against that power. For this reason, for this reason, for this reason, for this reason, that's what he's talking about. Produce your cause. Said the Lord, bring forth your strong reasons just as you will bring evidence in court yeah, bring your, let's have your strong reasons okay okay you want me to fight for you why why should I fight for you so, ah, father if you don't fight for me unbelievers will laugh at me and say but you are my God <laughs> You have brought forth a reason. Say, Father, if you don't fight for me, I won't have money to do your work. You are bringing strong reasons. So, plead your cause. Bring strong reasons. All this happened in the altar of prayer. Altar of prayer. When you come to recognize God as a judge. God is a judge. He has cut room. I want you to understand this very well. There is a courtroom of God in heaven. Whoa. 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 Befalls any enemy that you drag that court. Whoa. Why did I say that? Because they will become enemies of themselves. When you drag them there, they will fight and be opposing themselves. And they won't know why they are fighting themselves. They will sink in the Red Sea after the order of Pharaoh when you drag them to that court they will be destroyed by the angels of God after the order of Sennacherib and the angel destroyed over 180,000 of Sennacherib soldiers one night when you drag them to that court. All the witches and the wizards and the occultic people they try so hard. <laughs> Christians don't understand these mysteries. They don't want you to understand it. Because when you understand it and you begin your dragon, dragon, they know they're in trouble. Because they will drag them from their coven to that judgment seat. And the lawyers of heaven will ask them why they are attacking this person from their coven. What has the person done? And they give out their judgment. And once heaven gives out judgment, it's given. Given. That's what the Bible says. See, because sentence against an evil work is not suddenly done. See, the heart of man is hardened to do evil. Some judgment have been pronounced against them. But God observes. Will they repent? Will they change their ways? Hold on a little bit. Hold on a little bit. But judgment has already been issued. So because that sentence, because God is a God of mercy, that sentence is not suddenly ex executed. Some, some enemies think nothing will happen. <laughs> Once we are dragged to the court of heaven, something will happen. When you drag them there, they will, the they will receive the stones of fire after the order of Goliath. What David did was to drag Goliath to that court. And say, ooh, ooh, 
is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who's this person? Who? Ha! What kind of insult is this? Who, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That he may defy the armies of the living God. He had filed this case. So, so, so Father, I, I drag this man to your court. He's defying the armies of the living God. Will you keep quiet and watch this fellow? Who keep quiet? That's what David technically did, but many believers don't understand. You drag him to that court. When you drag some people to that court. Their ways will become very cloudy and slippery. They will receive compulsory and forceful burial like Kola, Data, and Abiram. Which is what Moses did to Kola. Data and Abraham. So Father, look at these people. They are insulting your prophet. I might have made mistakes, but it's not in their mouth to be talking about it. And God agreed with Moses. For this reason, I would always advise members of Mountain of Fire Miracles Ministry. Don't ever put your mouth in anybody criticizing any man of God. Don't put your mouth. It is his master who will deal with him, not you. You don't go and start fighting God's battle. You are fighting for God. No, God is enough to fight his battle. Don't fight foolish battle. Anytime you see people maligning, insulting men of God, don't get involved. If they send it to your phone, don't forward it to anybody. To, to worsen the destruction of this generation. This generation has become a generation where people who were not born when a man starts a ministry is abusing him for not knowing what to do. Some that if not the pastor that pray for his mommy, he will not even be delivered. He's now born and is now talking against people who started ministry before he was born. It is a device of the devil to destroy the generation. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. But because sentence against an evil work is not quickly suddenly done. They, they continue to do it. Say, I did it. Nothing happened to me. <laughs> nothing, nothing is happening to me. Huh? Nothing is happening. The sentence is issued. Just hanging on the head like this. When it will fall, no pastor can deliver them. When the judgment falls, nobody can deliver them. I know some pastors, they came to me here. About seven of them. They were working under an overseer and they insulted him. They said all kinds of things against him and he dragged them to heaven. As of the time they came to see me, none of them had gone to the toilet for three weeks. The man did not say a word to Then I came to me. Said, Dr. Lukoya, uh, 
we annoyed our overseer and we think he might have issued a curse against us please use your higher anointing to cancel what he did to us so that we can be going to the toilet as they were speaking to me saliva was coming out of their mouth and mucus was coming out of their eyes and I think I now was in their case I'm sorry I don't pray that kind of prayer go back to the man go and apologize I'm begging if you go there first time he says no drag your wife and your children and go and beg they say you mean you will not pray Say, I'm sorry. I can't pray. They all shouted in Yoruba that we are done for. So, go and see. Anyone dragged to that court is seeking to be pursued by terrifying noises. They'll be hearing noises. They won't know where the noises are coming from. God will by that noise render the diviners mad. It wasn't me that wrote it in the Bible. It's there. So when you hear MFM praying, any witch doctor conjuring things against my name run mad and die it's in the Bible I didn't write it <laughs> it said he renders their diviners mad may any diviner against you run mad in the name of Jesus they must run mad they must run mad they must run mad in the name of Jesus any power dragged to that court is seeking to be eaten by spiritual worms like the worms ate a rod they are, they are looking for bombardment of bad luck. They are seeking to become a prey of eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood. They will eventually become landlord in the valley of defeat. They will get a sea of hope for occupation in the desert. They invite sorrow to their lives when you drag them to that court. But this is a style of prayer many believers don't know, don't understand. And by that, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. They just did not know. Lack of knowledge. That strange woman. If you drag her to that court and say, Father, I was the one that paid the school fees of this man when he was in school. I was the one who did this, who did that. But I don't know where this woman came from. But I'm dragging this woman to your court now. And you must issue judgment against her. Judgment against her. You'll be amazed at what will happen. So the final, the supreme 
I'm absolute judge over all creation is God Almighty so one powerful weapon of spiritual warfare is to drag the enemy to the court a time will certainly arise in your life if it has not arrived now that you have to go to this courtroom and bring cases to God and have him judge your case Job <laughs> Job ran to the court of the almighty he came to the courtroom that God should render judgment between his friends and Satan when God raised judgment Job had to pray for his friend for the judgment to, to subside in Job chapter 23 verse 2 Job 23 verse 2 Oh, even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. That I might come even to his seat. I will order my course before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I will know the words which he will answer me and understand what he will say unto me. You can read the rest of that chapter at all. Problems started with Job's friends. Job had to pray for them. In the Luke 18 that we just we read, it presents God as a judge. Avenge me of my adversaries. Avenge me of my adversaries. Avenge me of my adversaries. Read the Bible well, beloved. You see how many times the psalmist made reference to God as a judge, as a judge. Lawyers who are here will tell you. You don't go before any judge in the courtroom in a disorganized state. You won't get before a judge and say, I'm, I'm here because uh, somebody fired arrows at me. And then judge too, I am hungry. Judge, I have to pay school fees. Judge, my rent is due. Judge, you don't go to, you don't go there in a disorganized state like that. The Bible said, line upon line, precept upon precept. Many people are facing one battle. Two battles. Three. Four. Five. Even some people are fighting at ten different battlefronts. If you don't have a very good prophet and you cannot discern by the Holy Spirit, you will think you will think it's just one battle. There is <laughs> many battles. In spiritual war, you don't lump all the battles together like that. Take them one at a time. There is a person. Your father is a native doctor. Battle number one. Your mother is a marine agent. Battle number two. Then when you were born too, they initiated you unconsciously. But number three, when you want to marry now, you marry into a strong family where they don't want anybody to prosper. Another battle. 
you go to the place of work as envious witchcraft another battle so unless you sit down take them one by one that's how to present it take the first battle which is the foundational one deal with it deal with it until you know that is resolved then you go to the next one the Bible says if the, if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do somebody has said the righteous will be crying for sorrow if he doesn't go and revisit that foundation then after finishing that one then you go to your mother's side finish with that one go to this envious witchcraft that's how to present your case there is nothing like general prayer when it comes to spiritual war and if you must get a hearing from heaven there are steps you must take steps you must take number one you want to be hard in the court of heaven? You want to drag cases down? You want judgment? One, ensure that your life is fully yielded unto the Lord. Fully yielded unto the Lord. Two, give up all your sins. Give up all your sins. Three. Carry out a thorough cleansing of your life to ensure that Satan has no legal claim. Thorough cleansing of your life to ensure that Satan has no legal claim. Somebody wanted to worship an idol somewhere in the Asian country. Everybody was contributing money to the idol. She doesn't have money to contribute. So, so she decided to scrape a long hair and, and use it as an offering to the idol. Then the priest of the idols they sell off this year. Transport them to Africa. And you. You. I want to be fine. Now put it on your head. Because you want to be fine. I don't know who you want to please. Is it your destiny? Who do you want to please? So you put these strange materials on your head, which is your symbol of glory and destiny. Each time you put it on, you reinforce the enemies against you. And this is why you hear me announcing you are, if you are coming for weekend deliverance, dress properly. No wigs, no attachment. You don't know where those things have come from. Some have been taken from corpses. And they are selling it. And now you put it on. You say you are fine. You are not fine at all. Not at all. What's happening is that your face may be beautiful and fine. But your brain is so ugly than anything. So, if you don't cleanse your life thoroughly, and the devil has a legal claim, now you now go to court. Say, Father, I'm dragging these people here into this court. They too will talk. They will talk. 
I said, but uh, she, she's wearing our material. <laughs> our, our property is on her head. So she can she's benefiting from us. She cannot bring us here. And sure that Satan has no legal ground. You have been born again for years. Why are you keeping materials from your former sugar daddy and former boyfriend? Ah, it's a phone, sir. It's a phone. It's very expensive. It's a phone more expensive than your destiny. It's better for you to be phoneless and get your destiny in order. Ensure Satan has no legal claim upon your life. No legal claim upon your life. Four. You need to organize your petition in a logical manner. You may need a pen and a paper. First of all, list what they are doing to you. The way you are going to tell God. Then you give reasons why judgment must be given against them. One way to do that very well is to write this thing down and present the paper before God. Five, you come to that courtroom by the blood of Jesus. That blood that gives you access to the place. Six, request to come into that courtroom and request for a hearing before the judge of the whole earth. But if you don't bring any case to him, what case will he judge? I just bring general, general prayers. And seven, you ask the Holy Spirit to help your case and give you words, give you information, give you groanings that cannot be uttered to be able to present your case. Bow down your heads, beloved. And all eyes closed. In case you are here this morning, you are not born again. You cannot just surrender your life to Jesus. Do so very quickly now. And find a way quickly to this altar. But pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Do so very very quickly now we continue this message next time find a way to the altar now jesus is waiting for you here those of you at the altar i congratulate you just bow down your head say what i'm going to say after me say father in the name of jesus i come before you now lord jesus come into my life take control of my life in jesus name amen i'm going to all eyes closed you have few prayers to pray in a few minutes. And immediately we close now, the sisters who gather for their monthly prayer meeting. Let your voice draw like thunder as you pray like this. Every chain of disappointment tied against my breakthroughs. Can you say that loud? Break my fire in the name of Jesus.
Ke sate na kaya bo shenderaba In Jesus name we pray Say strangers Assigned to make me sick In the name of Jesus In Jesus' name we pray with a very loud voice. I transfer my problems back to my enemies by the power in the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and shout it. Makate sete la kaya bo shente rabo santa. In Jesus name we pray. Say curses on my father's head. Curses on my mother's head. Seeking for my head. Can somebody shout that loud? Can you say it again? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Finger of the wicked. Shout his love. Come out of my body. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.